action um, project now. Okay, we, we are in the fourth workshop of the Multiculturalism in Action workshop. And here we are at the Institute of Fuji Cities at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And we are very happy to have our speaker today, um, who is Ms. Um, Manuela Catania, and she is in Italian. Italian in the sense that, of course, she is by nationality and culture Italian, but she is also physically in Italy today. So we are particularly grateful that um, uh, Manuela is having us with the workshop today, um, although she is being locked down in Sicily. Um, we are very happy that she is having us with this workshop. And of course, um, as you already know, if you've read the posters, our viewers have read the posters, that Manuela is a multi-talented person. Um, she has a degree in architecture and, and also in jewelry and accessories design. Right, so she is an um, internal designer, she is a jewelry designer, she is a stylist, she is an architect, she's everything in one person. <laughs> um, so we, we are very happy um, that she is here today. Now, of course, Manuela being a, um, an Italian in Hong Kong, she's been teaching in Hong Kong uh, as well as in Macau, and she has rich experience teaching all over the world, really, sharing her vision about sustainable fashion. And this is what we all want to learn about in Hong Kong because we spend so much money on buying clothes every year. So what do we do with those clothes? Uh, should we be doing that still? And you know, we'd love her to um, share her views with us as well. Um, and of course, if you are joining us because you have this book on hand, because this is our new publication, from the Multiculturalism in Action project, um, you could actually see Manuel's uh, work. Uh, let me find the page for you. She is in, if you give me 20 seconds um, or less than that, she is in page, is it? Page A. Let me find her here. 38, 30, page 38 to 39. So, um, for viewers who already have the book on hand, you can turn to this book as well and uh, check if you have any questions as well. But it um, doesn't matter if you don't have it, we are also putting um, the PDF version on our website. So without further ado, let me do this in a little bit of Cantonese, so it's just so that our um, Chinese-speaking audience will also be able to understand. Um, 大家好啊, Tongaga 在今天我們要介紹的是一位意大利的設計師 珠寶和飾物的設計 就是香港大概有三千六百的意大利裔的人,他們來到香港是從事很多元化的活動,其實他們十九世紀就來了,當時是以宗教、教育或者其他的人道的事業,譬如醫療各方面,都是很大的貢獻在香港社會。大部分在香港的生活的意大利的年輕人
喺誒商業上邊啦，咁設計啦、藝術啦各方面都有。咁誒，我哋今日咧就聽下啱啱咧誒，佢點樣樣去介紹嘅意大利文化。So switching back to English, um, you'd like to um say buongiorno to uh Manuela, and I just introduced you as part of the very vibrant, active um Italian community in Hong Kong because. Uh, as you may already know, we have roughly 3,600 Italians living in Hong Kong, and although the number looks small, um, you've been very active since the 19th century, really, um, in terms of um, bringing to Hong Kong religion, especially Catholicism, um, contributions to education, contributions to medicine, and, and various areas of um, art and commerce. So today, um, we have a very young and active Italian community in Hong Kong in all, sorts, on all walks of life. So um, uh, perhaps you could um, start with um, telling us what you, as an Italian in Hong Kong, think um, about this development or uh, your views about um, how art in Italy has been very much part of what we think as Italian design. And so may, may I turn over the mic now to you? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your introduction and uh, thank you for inviting me uh, this uh, morning in Italy, afternoon, in early afternoon in Hong Kong. Uh, first of all, um, good morning, everyone. Uh, it is really my pleasure to be here today and to share with you my sustainable vision and project with everybody from Italy. Uh, so, uh, yes, I think I can start to uh, share with you the, my PowerPoint. I have a short presentation that will guide us uh, on, this, uh, on the first part of the sustainable uh, workshop. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, one minute. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm here. Wait, wait, just one minute. So perhaps we can turn on. Okay, yes, now it should be fine. Can you see my screen? Okay. 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 The viewers can also use the chat function. In Zoom, if you have any questions at all, whether you know you, you can't hear us or you can't see clearly, or you have a question for Manuela regarding her presentation, so please feel free to use the chat function. So, Manuela. Okay, thank you so much. Um, first of all, I'd like to I'd love to introduce myself uh, um, with this quote from Gandhi. Uh, you must be the change you wish to see in the world because uh, uh, since we're talking about sustainable projects, so we are talking on how to be um, to protect our planet. I think uh, um, we everything we think, everything we do must uh, um, guide us um, in a different way to perceive, to see the, our world. So everything is uh, you think, everything you want to make in terms of small step can really change the way how we look at life, at the things. And I do believe that sustainability is made about that. Small things can move the, the world. So and we need to work for this. Five words uh, define my sustainable project. Hong Kong, Bali, vision, caring, and multicultural. Hong Kong, because my sustainable project was born in Hong Kong um, now five years ago. I was collaborating um, with uh, the Italian consulate in Hong Kong for like a sustainable textile exhibition at K11. And uh, after that, I really was interested on in this part of textile and sustainability. So I decided to go more in depth. Uh, the second step uh, was uh, I met in 2017 um, kids of a children house in Bali uh, and uh, together we uh, created like a sustainable charity project based on the reuse of uh, plastic bags. As you know in Bali plastic is uh, one of the biggest problems they have and uh, so we found a way to reuse the plastic and to make something that it was more related to fashion design and art. 
With this uh, prototype that you can see in the photo, we organized some exhibition in Hong Kong, in Italy, in Bali, and uh, um, at the same time, I also used to organize a workshop. And with the, uh, the money I collect during uh, the exhibition and workshop, I used to support the kids in Bali. So helping them for their studies and their daily life. Um, so sustainability is also a way to take care about someone, right? It's not just a way to create something for yourself, for your house, but at the same time to support community. And like in this case, kids in need. Um, one more thing is uh, in terms of vision, in terms of like what I like, I'm always fascinated by um, back to the, like the history, right? The history always guide me to find a new inspiration in terms of design. I'm from Sicily and uh, Sicily is my, one of my news, let's say, in terms of inspiration. So all the things I do using recycled material come from my place. Um, uh, here you can see uh, a fo some photos of uh, uh, a muse uh, for me is a Donna Franca Florio um, in the early 20th century. She was like, uh, like an iconic uh, figure in that period. And the necklace you can see on the left side is the necklace that we are going to do today. Mainly is made by recycled materials like youth and uh, bed linen. But the inspiration comes from this woman, the way how she used to wear this beautiful cape, as you can see in the photo, or beautiful pearl. So the little note, uh, note that I make in my necklace are really inspired by her. Um, so there is a lot of, at the same time, also of Baroque style into my uh, design, my way to think about design. That is something that probably you can see the way out the richness of the detail and just using simple material, exactly as we have from the early 20th century from Donna Franca Florio. But today we are here to talk about Italian culture and I'm very like, it's my pleasure to share about, about that with you. Um, as you know, the characters of the Italian history are the artisan. Uh, they are custodians of a series of value and cultural knowledge. And uh, through this, we can really understand our country and the way how many uh, brands, even like contemporary brands, they still produce uh, uh, in this way. I combine here uh, some images about what is Italy for me. Right, so I just uh, was uh, uh, was on Google and just tried to find images that really for me represent Italy in terms of like uh, color, feeling, handicraft, artisan, and uh, emotion and vibes. And probably you can recognize some of the typical traditional way to work with glass, with lace, or to make uh, like uh, tomato, mozzarella, the famous one, or pasta as well. So I think all these things can tell about our background, our like the DNA, right? Um, our workshop today is focusing on uh, Italian culture, sustainability, and handicraft. Handicraft is an Italian word that means artigianato. Uh, this word comes from Latin arts, that means art and technique. So the word itself tells us a lot. So it's not just a way, something like, oh, let's make something to, because we need, but it's a way to make that something in a poetic way with a soul. Uh, and the soul is one of the most important part when we talk about jewelry design. I belong to a family of jewelry, like my, my father was, since like was very young, working in a, uh, like a jewelry, um, making jewelry by himself and, um, so I was always fascinated by that. And what I learned from him, and also like studying jewelry design later in Milan, was uh, Italian jewelry as a really like a soul. And all the jewelry brand we have in Italy, they always try to get inspiration from the place where they are, combining art and uh, um, architecture and the place itself. So I just listed here some cities where we have the most important uh, jewelry brand in Italy, like Valenza, Vicenza, Arezzo, and Torre del Greco. And some brand that you, you can even look by yourself, like Re Carlo, Damiani, Fope, Ungari, and Raiola. But my uh, jewelry, let's say, news um, is Bulgari. Bulgari is an Italian brand. Um, the headquarter is in Rome, the Eternal City. 
And I collect here some images just to share with you the, um, the way how they work, the way how they create, because behind the jewelry process, there is a long story. It's a story of love, of heart, of, uh, uh, of need, because they always look at the women, how the women can feel them, themselves is elegant and uh, sophisticated and unique. Um, so, uh, for this reason, I'd love to share with you one video from Bulgari, it's a short video, because probably like uh, my words can help to explain on how they work, but I think it can give us more like vibes and more uh, information about. So, yeah, could you please uh, share? Okay, perfect, thank you. Yeah, you can share. Il gioiello moderno è stato inventato dagli indiani, a mio parere. Gli indiani erano pieni di colore, erano dei gioielli che erano di tutti i colori. Ed è forse il popolo che più ha amato, più ama i gioielli. Se avete dei certi quadri indiani, non c'erano anche gli uomini che sono dei gioielli. Inventata noi, mentre pietre preziose e sempre preziose. Perché nelle pietre sempre preziose ci sono dei colori straordinari, che non ci sono nelle pietre preziose. Magari il DNA è pietra colorata e eh, avere un feeling proprio con le pietre di colore e non, non a caso questo tavolo è pieno di pietre colorate e tanti clienti mi dicono voi fate delle cose meravigliose che nessuno riesce a fare, combinazioni di colori strane, avvertate se vogliamo, però molto belle. È una cosa che ho imparato dal, dal signor Bulgari, quando vedo una pietra a volte prima la tocco e poi la guardo. E quindi sì, è vero, eh, anche i diamanti, lui spesso li, li tocca senza guardarli e poi dice sì, mi piacciono. E faccio la stessa cosa anch'io. The gem is going to represent the soul, the spirit of that jewel. The gold part, the metal part, represent the body, which is the skeleton, the structure. Through the gem, you will appreciate concept, the passion that uh, is uh, inside the jewel. Roma per me è una fonte di ispirazione di colore, sempre. Il colore del cielo, il colore dei palazzi, chi ne è insieme. Just by walking down to Piazza Navona, it's so easy to find a line, a specific stylistic motif. Uno può essere ispirato da delle piccole cose, da un sogno che fai, da una chiacchierata che fai con una persona. Insomma, in certe volte eh, guardo anche il design delle macchine, le linee, le forme, è molto interessante. Appropriarci delle culture di tutto il mondo, riportarle a Roma e fare qualcosa di secondo me unico. Prima di comprare le pietre dobbiamo già aver pensato che cosa fare. Quando le pietre arrivano su questo tavolo, comincio a lavorare con il signor Bulgari e lavoriamo facendo le combinazioni di colori. E la disegnatrice poi disegnerà... Questo è un, è un lavoro di gruppo, noi possiamo dare delle idee ai disegnatori, però i disegnatori a loro volta ci danno delle idee. E io credo nella qualità, eh, la qualità della fattura è importantissima. But you need to have very skilled artisans who are able to pass this uh, passion into the jewel, to infuse into the jewel this sensibility. This is the beauty of the manufacturing. It's an opera of art, an opera of engineering. So it's not only the technicality, as well as uh, how the necklace can be worn as a sort of a second skin. Difficile fare avere una manifattura del genere, è una cosa veramente molto, molto rara. È rara come le pietre. Bisogna sempre pensare che un gioiello è sulla pelle di una donna, però deve essere molto ergonomico, o deve avere delle punte. No, le idee sono, sono veramente molto piacevoli al tatto. Questa è la cosa, una delle cose importanti che Beside the technicalities, another extremely important uh, topic since the very beginning was uh, the heart, so the passion, the sensibility. 
ma tutto questo lo facciamo proprio con l'amore di fare qualcosa di bello, di speciale, che alla fine possa essere anche definito un'opera d'arte, perché veramente i nostri pezzi sono fatti con, con l'amore la, che parte dalla pietra alla, alla manifattura. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for sharing this video. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's important to, to, to watch because it's, you can see now, um, in terms of like Italian culture, we always get inspiration from the place where we are. Could be color, could be like the city itself, could be like the wives of the place where we are living. And I really like also the way how they combine, the, how they say the culture, different culture together, like the, from India, from other country, in terms of color, stone, emotion, and then they just use the, the quality of the Italian craftsmanship. So I think this is make the, the jewel like really, really unique. And it's something that we can do and we can do uh, using a recycled material and something we're gonna do today, later together. Yes, so I will uh, continue to share my uh, PowerPoint. Can you see it, right? Um, not yet, I think we need to turn and okay. share the Ah, okay, fine, waiting, yeah, perfect. No, so while we're waiting, I just want to say a couple of words in Cantonese because we have some time speaking to this. Um,其實,啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱啱
to create a real piece of fabric. With this fabric, they just make bag, bag, uh, bag design. And as you know, this weaving is quite, is very iconic and very like strong in terms of uh, uh, brand identity because easily we can recognize one Bottega Veneta bag just because it's made by this uh, uh, weaving of uh, leather uh, stripes. Um, so, um, uh, I, I go to, oh, sorry, I need to share like this. You can see, right? Okay. Yes, um, yeah, another brand that is like, uh, again, um, inside the fashion family is Ferragamo. It's an Italian brand. They, they make shoes. Uh, Ferragamo, I'm sure you know Ferragamo, the ballerina Ferragamo. I know in Hong Kong are also very like uh, famous. Uh, many women used to wear and uh, uh, for like uh, a daily activity, like for normal um, business attire, but even for parties, they are very elegant and very flexible in terms of style. But I'd love to say like Ferragamo um, is really focusing on uh, craftsmanship and detail and taking care of all the things from like shoes, mainly for male and female. Uh, Ferragamo was the creator, they say, of the stiletto eel made by Hal in wood and half in aluminium. Um, so in this way is uh, quite strong and it prevents to break at every step. They create for male the tramezza. The tramezza is a layer of thick and very flexible uh, leather that is inserted between the insole and sole, called the partition, because it's placed between the two layers. So in this way the shoes is very durable and very flexible and very stable. Uh, there is also one video for that is quite short that show will show us on how uh, Ferragamo works. And again, you will see the feeling of love of making a piece of art that is really behind to have just a final product. Um, so I'm going to stop my presentation and I will ask uh, you to share the, the video from Ferragamo. Thank you. Okay, so we have to um, ask Manuela to stop sharing. Ah, the ah okay, I need to stop sharing. So then we sharing. can show the video from our end. Ah, okay, now it should be fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing the video. Okay, fine. Um, so, uh, yeah. So you can see again the dedication, right, to create the final product. So the story behind, the love that is behind to create this art piece, this like piece that is unique, right, because it's just handmade. Um, back to my uh, presentation. Um, so, um, uh, you can find here um, a link that I uh, I found in uh, where you can register for like some online workshop in Italy uh, based on like uh, accessories on and uh, like in general fashion and not only even art and my email if you have question and my uh, Instagram account that is called Vision Pia um, where you can find all my uh, sustainable experience uh, around the world so I hope you can enjoy to watch it uh, yes and uh, what we're doing here is to find yes the 
Perfect. Okay, here you can see the link. Fine. And uh, to the next one, you can see my email and uh, you can find my Instagram uh, account for the sustainable project. Um, this sustainable project is something that I, uh, as we said at the beginning of this uh, um, uh, sharing session, uh, I'm trying to uh, bring in different countries in order to blend myself with a different culture and uh, again put everything together because I feel that we nowadays we need to look at uh, design, we need to look at life as a way to um, put together all culture. We are all, all the same on that and I think in the moment even during the the COVID, the pandemic, like lockdown, we realized that even more. So I think it's very, very important to step back and to just put all the energy together. And uh, blend culture is one of the most important key uh, for our, our future. Okay, uh, thank you. I think we can go to the next where we have uh, the MHIA contact. Okay, we can go to that. Um, okay, first of all, here you can find the uh, steps of the online workshop we're going to do today. Uh, we are going to use just two material and um, maybe recycle like uh, youth uh, from uh, the coffee bag and uh, some uh, recycled fabric. I have here bed linen but you can use any recycled fabric like old clothes everything you have anything you have at home because i really i do believe that we in, we need, must be able to recycle everything we have don't just trash or just say i don't need any more i want to buy something new you can buy something new but all the same time if you don't wear what you have uh, because you feel is old is not trendy anymore maybe give to these uh, uh, clothes or these things a second life uh, I uh, always mention about a, a very famous Italian designer, Bruno, Bruno Monari. He was telling that everything has, has a second life because everything has a soul and we need to work with the soul of the thing. We need to give a second chance to, to be something else. Um, so I think we can go to the next slide. Thank you. Yes. And this is some ham high A contact. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So let me just recap a little bit for our Cantonese viewers that uh, Manuela gave us a very important message and which is that, you know, during this time of pandemic, actually she is joining us from Italy because uh, she cannot fly back to Hong Kong. Um, but um, it is very important. Um, I'll say it, you know, in, in two sentences in, in, in Chinese. Um, 其實全球看來有很多不同的文化但其實我們在欣賞不同文化的差異的時候也需要欣賞到其實文化與文化之間有很多共通點買東西其實買東西本身當然不是一個問題但是我們怎樣可以令一件物件可以有一個可以延長到它的生命或者我們用完一樣物件的時候怎樣可以讓它第二次生命呢這個也是很重要我們往往是忽略了這一點所以今天
And love is not just uh, uh, falling in love with the material, with the color and with the design, but I think the most important message I want to share with you today, love is blending culture all together. Um, putting all the, um, the, uh, the tradition and all the, uh, the things from different culture will uh, break all boundaries. Right, and this something that we can, as a creative, we can really do. Um, just uh, um, briefly, when I was uh, during the lockdown, I was uh, um, conducting some su uh, sustainable line workshop with the university in Hong Kong and in Macau. And uh, um, the thing is, uh, was a moment of find a way to connect all together. So it was a kind of isolation, but at the same time, creative isolation. Because even though we are isolated, uh, heart and the design and creativity can really connect us all together and making a kind of community that it doesn't matter if we are in Italy, in India, in Hong Kong, any place. Thanks to the technology, we can be all together and we can make something, right? We can be connected. So I think this is the most important message today. Yeah, thank you. Right, so um, Manuela, I want to tell you that now the people in Italy, because of the pandemic, we came back to Hong Kong, but because we now have a new technology, we can also be able to think together or to make a collaboration. 一個一個project出來的,所以今日呢,佢亦都帶咗一啲佢以往做過嘅一啲可再生嘅或者持續嘅永續嘅一啲時裝啦,同埋物品出嚟介紹俾我哋睇嘅。So Manuela, you have brought some of your previous works to show us. So what you can do with recycled materials? Yes, exactly. First of all, with the recycled material during the lockdown, I did some back. This is just made by plastic, recycled plastic. Very pretty handbag from recycled. Thank you. Another one, very cute. It's more elegant, probably, with some, again, recycled plastic and bad linen stripes, you can see. And another example I want to share with you is this one is in blue color. Again, some uh, stripes made by recycled fabrics mm -hmm. and plastic bags. But I'd love to share the in inner part of this bag. There are no sewing or stitching line. Everything is uh, uh, made by note, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's something that you can do by yourself, even though you don't have any sewing machine at home or you don't have any skills about sewing. So I think uh, this is something that I really uh, feel it could change the way how we uh, look at the things and the way how we work. And then you can see, we can get a final product that is really unique, right? Mm -hmm. So this is uh, just one part. But then since today we are going to work with the um, um, recycled uh, youth and uh, old fabric, I have here some small artwork I made, maybe I can share with you. This is denim and uh, part of a dress. Uh, the yellow color one, uh, so you can see the youth. So um, at the beginning, I was thinking about these pieces as like artwork from my home in Hong Kong, uh, inspired a little bit from, uh, um, again, from my land, but also, also from Bali, a place that I used to fly very often in order to work with the children and the, the style they have in the island is something that really inspired me a lot. Mm -hmm. the, the, the idea of unfinished, right? Uh, so this is one example. You can see the front side or the back or vice versa. The back just made on my bag. Yes, it is. Uh, use some maa bao dai la, jiang hui uh, zin zuo chu lei la. Ye zhe hao yi ai lei zuo yi ai shu chuang zuo. Pei yi ai ngam zai fu, tong ma yi tiu gao quan wang zhe ge hai ge yi quan la. Ah, nam zhe ge hai ngam zai fu la. Ma jiang hui bian zheng yi bao tiu zhi hao la, zhe hao yi zai zuo yi hao leng ge yi ge ah zhuang xi fan chu lei. Ma yi ge mei yuan sheng. Ma yi ah man yi la chi de la jiang hui jiang hui yuan sheng ge la. 他給我們看到很多不同的例子,怎樣用麻包袋,就可以做到很漂亮的衣服和袋,都可以用得著的一些物件出來的。Right, wonderful. I think this is all very good examples of how you use jute and recycled fabric. 
Yeah, you can really create a new textile. With the textile, you can make the clothes if you really want to make like a jacket, skirt, or bag, exactly. So there is no any limit for that. So, and this is just a, like a recycled thread that I used to have, you know, in Hong Kong and again, the youth. Another like uh, art piece. And one of the biggest I'd love to share with you as well. It took me many months to be completed. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I made, I use it here, you can see uh, youth. The base is oh. just youth. And then I, you can see all the notes on the back, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, so with all the notes, you don't even need sewing. You don't need... No, need. at all, no need. What we are going to learn today is actually about that. And then again, it could be an artwork for your home, mm -hmm. but it could be also work. So this is, I think, an impos most important part. Of course, could be with less fringes in order to have something lighter, not as heavy. But at the same time, you can make skirt, you can make like uh, a jacket, you can make whatever you want, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, so this is uh, what I have here because mostly of my, most of my hard work are in Hong Kong, not in Italy. So luckily I was able to find something and making something during the lockdown as well. Uh, but I think we can start our workshop yeah. and uh, yeah. Um, the first thing I would love to say to you is um, uh, this is the Utah bag, that coffee Utah bag I used to recycle. Yeah. Uh, well, in... I don't know in Hong Kong, I remember it was not easy to find for me. So I used to collect uh, a Utah bag in Bali, uh, the coffee bag one. Uh, so always I encourage people, participant, designer, student, to uh, find material like secondhand material, recycled material, never buy uh, as a new. Uh, of course, if you need to make something because you want to test, you want experience, it's okay. But always find a way to use what you have already or go to find maybe in the shop and ask, uh, could you please uh, uh, give me, if you don't use any more, like uh, plastic bags or like Utah bag, a coffee bag, like this one. So today we're going to use this, okay. plus some bed linen. Okay, thank you. And I think we can start if you don't have any question or, okay. I'm going to fold a little bit the screen. Okay. Are you able to see, right? Yes. Okay, yes. perfect. So from the Utah bag you saw before, you can cut any shape that you like. I just cut like a rectangle like this one. But again, you can cut smaller, you can cut bigger. This is really up to you. Um, once you have a piece that you say, I want to make a necklace, right? Because today we are going to make this. So this is the size that I'm, I'm going to use from my Utah bag. Um, what I suggest always is just fold, right? Can you see? Once you fold this one with a marker, any marker is okay. Uh, I say marker because it then is more visible. If you just use pen, it won't be easy uh, to uh, draw on the fabric and won't be, be visible uh, enough. Just you can uh, this, uh, draw a line. It could be any line, like a curve, or it could be like a line, straight line. I, uh, when I talk about jewelry, again, back to Bulgari, we need to make something that is ergonomic. So I really like to work with the line, the curve, the shapes of the, the female body, right? Uh, so I just uh, uh, draw here a line, like this one. Don't worry too much if you are not very good in drawing or sketching. It's not about that, okay? Just follow your heart, okay? Making a, like this one. You can make it if you're not able to do it. I'm going to make a little bit of 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 Okay, come on again. Exactly. It looks like the color. Back again to Donna Franca Florio. I show you the, the my news in Sicily. Uh, she used to wear this huge color, right? And I'm uh, very fascinated about that. Right. But well, of course, we are gonna make a small color because I we we must be uh, vers versatile, like just decide what we want in terms of design. And also today we don't have so much time to work on that. So I think I'm gonna make a very small color first. But you can do 
bigger as you like. Okay. So once the design, the design itself is done with the scissor, preferably it's better to use a scissor for fabric, will help you a lot. Uh, you can just cut, okay? Still keeping this piece of youth folded like that, okay? Right. So I'm gonna cut now. Put your finger. Of course, you need to help yourself with the other hand because the fabric is not so, I mean, it's not cotton, right? So, very unstable, easy to move. So, you can see my hand, right? Just keep this one stronger and just keep cutting on here. Right. Yeah, I cut one side. Don't trash this because you can always find a way to recycle later. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then I'm gonna cut this part. This is the neck part. Okay. Same here. You can even make herrings, right? Okay, well, that's a good okay. idea. Okay, so look at the things uh, with a very creative mind. Okay, it's very, very important. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. So finally, I got my shape. That is okay. I mean, if you feel it's too big for you, you can even cut more. So it means you can fold again, maybe do a, another line and say, mm, this is so big, I want to make smaller and just make smaller. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're very like free on that. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to keep this one because I like a big color as you can see in even in all my project. Mm -hmm. So I think we are going to keep this one like that. So the other step now will be start to fill this one without any stitching line, sewing line. We just use our end and the recycled material. Mm -hmm. I have here on my desk this morning um, some stripes that I cut from a bed linen. This was a bed linen that I found at home. Uh, and then I just cut stripes. But I'd love to share with you how I cut all these stripes of fabric because as you can see, all the age are raw age. Can you see? Yes. And I love that. Very neat. Yes. Yes, exactly. So I'm, uh, so I put this one on the side for a while and I take a piece of uh, my bed linen. As you can see, it's a wrinkled, it's maybe a little bit, uh, not dirty, but during the lockdown, I use it to create my uh, open air studio. So it's something that I use uh, uh, all in these months, many times for different things. So I don't really mind about that because the point in is giving a second life to think so that maybe they are not like, uh, as we say, perfect anymore. I don't really like this word perfect, but I mean, they're not new anymore. So giving a, sec a second life is also about this. So now I'm, I'm going to show you how to cut the fabric easily. So mm -hmm. again, scissor, and then just cut. Uh, you can go maybe with the two finger like mm -hmm. sides. Okay. Yeah. Do a small cut here. Can you see? Mm -hmm. And then... And then you get the first stripe. Yes. Keep doing this one because maybe you need many of that. It's okay. And again, look at the raw age. The beauty of the raw age will make your final product really unique. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so after this, uh, I, again, back to my, um, to the color. Okay, what I'm gonna do is making some all. So always I have used a scissor to help myself to make all. If I need to fill my necklace, this color, sorry, I always start from the bottom to the top. The reason is if I start from the top, I start to make fringe, then it will be difficult for me to add the fringes in the bottom. Okay, so I go on this way. From the bottom to the top. Okay. So the 
咁因為你一路整嘅時候咧，就如果你由個頂開始咧，就會阻住自己嘅。咁我哋由個底開始咧，就篤一啲窿出嚟啦。我諗應該係 ，yes。So we are pushing the scissors through to make holes. Yes, I start like this one. Maybe not too close to the edge because you can see this uh, the youth is quite uh, is strong, of course. But then if you cut, maybe you can have this issue like this. So mm. if, of course, if you want to make the very perfect one or you want to sell, you can just sew by hand or with machine, of course, all the edges in order to to block the the. The, the the fiber right so maybe you can just uh, like sew with the with the needle just do like this one the running one going yeah. around in order to fix so this is could be another option later on yes but now i just start to make the hole can you see with the yeah. scissor mm -hmm. i just open the scissor a little bit can you see my movement with my yeah. hand yeah. fine and and I, yeah i got the first hole so with the fabric that I cut before, you can see, right? I just uh, make a kind of round here, okay? And just put inside. Okay, So you pull it until it's the length you, des you desire, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, always. And then once it's like that, I just make a note. Okay. Of course, the note the, has to be bigger than the all. Otherwise, can easily go out, mm. right? So if you feel this is too small, make one more overlap. It's fine. It's very flexible. <laughs> yeah, absolutely flexible. Can you see? So I think now it's quite good, it's quite bigger. And then I just pull. Okay. Then we make sure that the length is bigger, so you can make it bigger. The length is bigger, so you can make it bigger. Then we can see how the length is bigger. Then we can see how the length is bigger. Then we can see how the length is bigger. Then we can see how the length is bigger. And then you can see here that we have stripes quite long. So you can decide how long must be the fringe at the end. So usually I go, I don't have any plan in my mind because it's just based on my emotion. Uh, when I do this work, for me, it's a kind of meditation. Find myself doing, keep doing. So I just follow my emotion, maybe listening some music and say, okay, I want to cut maybe like that. Yeah. Done. So my just to be like this side. Manuela, even though this is also a process of self-discipline, I think this is a very good point. Yeah. One more thing is, I feel that this is not like a, a proper fringe because it's quite big. It's almost two finger, right? So what I usually do is a cut. You can cut in the middle like this one, or you can cut maybe, I'm gonna cut in the middle first, and then I show you. And then just like that. Right, right. And then keep doing. So the next one is gonna be on very close to this one. Okay, maybe here, like that. Can you see? Okay. And then yeah. open a little bit, not that much, otherwise they all, is too big. I think like that is fine. And then again, take the fabric, roll a little bit in order to help yourself like that, and just put inside here. And then maybe okay. okay. And then again, make the note on the back. Be sure that the note is big enough. So I'm gonna make two. Is better. Okay. And just pull out. Okay, and then I say I need to cut again. Just put this way and maybe cut on the same if you want the same because you can even have a necklace with asymmetrical fringes. Not necessarily they must be long or they must be like the same, right? They could be very small as well. So you have so many, many options on this. Uh, I'm going to cut again. So again in the middle. Okay. 
And then I suppose you can use even different colors, right? Of course, yes. For example, I have here another bed linen, more fl flower style. You can even blend. Uh, you can even blend color. Maybe they don't look uh, nice. You feel, mm, I don't like pink with red. Try, because when you make fringes, if you add color, even the color, they don't really, you don't feel they go together. They will work very, very well because mm -hmm. the feeling of the raw fabric, the raw age will make the, I really like an art piece. So don't feel uh, like afraid to try or just try and use all the fabric you have. Yes. For this reason, I want to share with you one more thing so because you can even use plastic, oh, okay? okay. Any plastic is okay. Yeah. Uh, of course, yeah. If you use plastic, you need to blend the different colors, and also add colors to the dress. But you can also add a little bit of a touch. Yes. Yeah. For example, I'm, I want to make this part, the neck part, just with some flower effect, roses. So I'm going to make an hole here. No, again, too close to the edge. Okay. Otherwise, you will break easily. So I'm going to make an hole quite big because the plastic I have is quite thick. Yeah. So I think I need this one. Basically the uh, dimension of the all is related to the thickness of the material that you have. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then um, so I take the fa the plastic again, and then just to roll because I need to help myself on this. Put inside. Okay, and then once you have this one like this, you need to make an all as well. So just maybe you need to turn. Right. Okay, like this one. Okay, and then since you want to make flower effect, maybe you need to cut a little bit. So I'm gonna cut like this. Can you see? But then you can choose. I think because this part go very close, goes on the neck, so it must be comfortable. Mm -hmm. It is plastic, so if it's a hot weather, you will feel very uncomfortable, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm gonna cut quite small, like mm -hmm. this one. Okay, and then I start to make a blossom oh, feeling. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, that's pretty. Yeah, it is, it is. And then you can keep doing like this one. So I'm going to show you one more if we still have uh, uh, time. Um, yeah, and then we can... So I'm going to make another hole here, maybe not too close, maybe like this one. There is no like uh, any rule for that or like uh, I need to uh, measure or absolutely no. It's just about feeling. Okay. So again, open this one as bigger you, much bigger you can and then take the, the, um, the plastic, roll a little bit and put inside and here. Yes. Make a note. Yes. Uh, the beauty of this final, uh, the, the necklace itself is you can use the back side, let's say, and the right side as you like. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then cut again here, maybe quite short, and then blossom filling. <laughs> Open all the flower. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's so, and then you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can use any plastic, you know, the transparent one and depend because, I mean, you can find different. So maybe you can make this part, the neck part with the flowers and then all these fringe going down. Right. Okay. 
Yes, one more thing is the final thing, the final step. Once your necklace is done with all fringes made in the same way I showed you before, and maybe with some flower on the neck part, you need to make it wearable. So what I suggest to do is you can make two holes, one here and one here, mm -hmm. the same one here and one here, and create like this. So I'm gonna make a note. Mm. Actually, I'm gonna make the all, two all first. Right. So one year. Yes. Right. So two holes on this side. Yeah, exactly. And then with the fabric that I cut before, roll again and put inside and make the uh, make the knot. I think a double is better because you know, since you're gonna hang on your body, mm -hmm. you must be have you must have this one very, very like uh, fixed. Right. Yeah. So I'm gonna make uh, uh, two, even three, because you know I want to be sure that mm -hmm. is very like. Okay. Can you see? Yeah. Yes. And then two, and then I have the first maybe. Uh, let's say I want to call this one like a kind of chain, right? It's not, of mm -hmm. course, but the feeling has to be the same. Uh, I'm gonna make one more on this side, so I'm gonna have this one, and then uh, let me take one more. Why this one? Then, let's help us to make this chain. This chain, why is it on the side? Why is it on the chain? Then, let's make sure that it doesn't fall out. Then, we can make two or three rows. Then, it's okay. Then, the second chain is also the same way. Then, we can make two or three rows. Then, we can make two or three rows. Then, we can make two or three rows. Yeah. Again, maybe two. So the first is here, the second is here, and maybe I'm gonna do one more. Okay, like that. Mm. Okay, fine. So this side is done. If you don't like uh, maybe this feeling, but then once the necklace is filled, right, with all the fringes like these and with the flower here. This one will be very like, will be part of. You won't feel this so weird or different then. Mm -hmm. But if you feel, no, I want to cover as well, you can keep making some flower or you can keep adding fabric and make some fringe like this one. I'm gonna show you. Maybe just add fabric like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you see? I'm going I'm going I'm gonna keep adding fabric. So you're gonna wear a necklace that probably has a fringes all over, you know, here and even here. So the same I need to do on this side. Okay. Once I do the same on this side, the same way two uh, stripe of fabrics, I can add fringes or not, wherever, the necklace is ready to be worn, like this. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, yeah. Okay, so we're going to say that the whole Wangma Bao has been filled with the bow tie, and then we're going to add two bows, and we're going to be able to put it on the top. So we're going to imagine that the two bows are going to be able to put it on the top. Yes. 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 It looks really pretty, even right now. <laughs> yeah, even though it's not finished, exactly. Yeah. So you can decide the length. The good things of this uh, working with your hand with in a note is like maybe one day you wear more casual. So you want to wear this one maybe like a little bit longer, you know, or you want to wear like that. Why not? Look yes. like part of your the, the t-shirt of your clothes. But then maybe you wear for maybe an evening uh, party. Maybe you can make, you can tie your hair like that. Mm. So show the neck and wear this beautiful necklace. And you can keep the, uh, the, um, the thread of the stripes on the back very long. Maybe highlighting your uh, back, right? So mm. this one could be left very long as right, well. Right, if you right. have fringes, as I showed you before, you, can, you will have so many fringes also on the back, okay? Mm. Or you say, no, today I'm going to wear this one like a belt. Why not? I mean, it's quite, yeah, exactly. It's going to be like this. Well, it's actually very interesting. So we're going to make a whole thing. It's not only to wear it on the face, but it's also to wear it on the face. 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 
個誒工前嘅裝飾啦。如果尤其是誒上 casual 啲嘅日咧，甚至可以將佢當一條腰帶啦，或者掛喺側邊啦。但係如果你係想誒、呃、去晚會嘅時候啦，你又可以將佢變成更加隆重嚇，咁樣係誒布帶咧好長咁樣吊喺後邊咧，形成一個好靚嘅背扇咁嘢，即係誒點樣用咧？大家都可以好有創造性得嘅 ，yeah just be creative， 因為 do what you like， 因為佢哋一啲啲 very kind of the day， 誒 ，it could be very formal， it could be very casual。Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very. I think is really you have the freedom to create what you have inside. You can bring outside. You can bring to life. Because I I really do believe that all, everything we do with end is based on our emotions, on our like uh, on our soul, on our like uh, uh, life. That is something very unique. Each of us will bring a little bit of herself, himself, into the final product, right, and it's right, right. and it's the beauty of working with and right. yeah. So but the importance yeah. of wearing fashion really is not for a particular brand to be seen on yourself, but rather you have to live out your own spirit. Yes. And represent your emotions of the day. Represent what you're thinking and feeling on the day, and that really is the most important thing of fashion. Yeah, absolutely. It is really like that. And uh, the additional part is the sustainable approach, because if we are able to produce art design, um, that for me they go together. I don't really feel design something and art different than design. I mean, they are strongly connected. And if we are able to uh, create uh, this uh, um, way to communicate uh, like design and art using a recycled material, I think we are really able to create what we want. Mm -hmm. And one more additional thing is be able to combine culture, to be, to be able to share your insight and making your insight as a guide for others, right? A way to, to meet, the meeting point, let's say, with mm -hmm. other people is about that. Right, right. So it's actually very, very you know, uh, incorporating this idea of putting different cultures together. I think it goes um, with our multiculturalism in action project spirit very, very much in, in that we believe that culture is constantly being created, constantly being constructed, especially when different cultures meet. They become something new and you can really develop something out of it instead of just sticking to a particular culture and drawing a boundary and say this is a and this is b they never meet and that's not true you know because with um the globalized world today uh, everybody you know is meeting with different cultures every day and it's a great thing if you could make use of these knowledges and put things together and you can create a new and i think this is very important and very very um important for us to remember yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I just uh, to all the participants, I really uh, um, so just to try to make this necklace. And if you want to share with me the process or the final outcome, you have my email. So you can email me anytime in order to get some uh, like feedback, but get some like direction. Uh, so you will see maybe in two, three days, you can make uh, your own product and uh, you will feel proud of that because something that you made for you with your hand, with your kitchen, Activity and with your skills. Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. And, and I'm sure our viewers will be very happy to um, share some of their products later on. Um, Manuela, I'm I'm going to say that because we are just learning the basics of the basics, the basic basics. I hope you all need more time to learn to design and design and design the way you want to use the basic basics of 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 the 佢變成自己好獨特嘅一個作品，咁佢阿 Manuela 咧就好希望大家能夠製成咗之後咧，可以 send 個電郵啦，俾佢 show 俾佢睇究竟你嘅作品係點樣樣。咁當然 M I A 呢邊咧，我哋亦都好會好開心咧，亦都好期待大家做成咗你嘅作品之後咧，同我哋分享一下究竟你嘅製成品係點樣樣嘅咧。而我相信每一個人嘅作品都應該係唔一樣嘅。咁我希望咧，大家將你嘅作品咧，影一張相 send 過嚟到我哋睇，咁我哋集合埋一齊咧，或者我哋將來可以做一個展覽都唔定咯。Then I was just telling our viewers that you know, um, we'd love to see the products and after they finish it, and perhaps later on when we get all these different 
pictures of um, people's unique products, we can even have an exhibition, right? Oh, wow. Okay. So, yes. it, can yeah. it can be a, you know, a virtual exhibition, but uh, then we are able to see the very creative spirit behind every individual. Exactly. I think this is a very good idea also because I think we have some participants from other countries. So we will see on our this, uh, this session about sustainable uh, design could really be uh, different from different people and different culture at the same time. So the exhibition is the best way probably to share all this emotion together. Yes, exactly. I'm totally agree. Exactly. And we will be able to see the beauty of how when cultures meet, how... Yeah. You know, what we can do with our new knowledges and be able to create something new with all the freedoms and creativity. And that's a wonderful thing to see. So um, I, I wonder if um, our viewers have any questions at all, as we said at the beginning, if you have a question, you could um, use the chat function and send it to us. Um, let's see if we have a question at all. And um we're we're just waiting to see if we have any questions okay. at all. Of course. Um, I'm very happy to, to answer and to give more direction if needed. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, I just want to say there is one brand, uh, it's a luxury fashion brand, it's called Victor and Rolf. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are uh, they um, created a collection called Vagabond. And exactly what they did was using all the fabric they basically they didn't use any before to create a new design exactly in this way like uh, old fabric even button to make like embroidery or things on clothes i mean even luxury uh, fashion luxury right now is uh, working on this direction because you know right now fashion is like changing we don't know exactly where we're gonna go but the most uh, things we are feeling as a like um, designer is focusing on sustainability, like the way how you can look at the fabric and the things you have in a different way, producing new clothes or new product. Mm -hmm. So I think this is something that we need to consider as well. Yeah. Yes. So yes. yeah, if you have a question. We, we don't have a question, but we have a comment that came oh. in, which says good inspiration. <laughs> I'm just reading. So um, I think this is one, but I think it actually you know, wraps up our, our work very well, which is that you know, there are a lot of things that seems to be just in our ordinary everyday life, but we don't see it. And I think it's very important that Manuela, you have pointed it out for us that you know, not to be afraid, that we can be creative and, and, and just use things that are already there. There's no need to keep buying things. Um, and exactly when we are able to think about what we already have and be able to develop something new out of it, it helps yeah. us develop our, our creative spirit because oftentimes um, in our schooling experience, we are given too many instructions. We don't know what to do if we are put on, you know, we are left on our own. And I think it's a great um, inspiration really today is to remind ourselves that we are, you know, individual subjects and we are able to make use of these things around us to create a world that we like. And I think this is a very important message that you are giving us. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it was my pleasure to share with you my project and my, the process. And I hope it really can inspire each of you today and to, to work. Maybe once we end this uh, uh, sharing session, you can start to make something because maybe you are inspired by and you want to use what you have at home. Um, yeah, and then looking forward to see your work then. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, before you go, I'll, um, I, I usually ask my speakers to teach us a phrase before they go and which is either thank you or goodbye so would you like to teach us how to say thank you in italian of course so we say grazie grazie and that's to you so thank you grazie. so much grazie a voi a voi uh, thanks yeah thank you grazie grazie yeah <laughs> goodbye is ciao uh good goodbye is arrivederci arrivederci, arrivederci. 
Arrivederci. Yes, exactly. So we'll yeah. say arrivederci to our viewers. Uh, sorry? So we will say goodbye to our viewers in Italian. Ah, yeah. Okay, arrivederci. arrivederci. Arrivederci and thank you really for joining to all the participants. Uh, thank you all. You, I hope you enjoy today and arrivederci from Italy. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.